There are many funny chapters in this book, but one of them has to do with the rats. You didn't just have a few rats in your house. It's one of my favorite chapters. It was one of the chapters I enjoyed writing the most because I couldn't help but laugh out loud every time I read the chapter. And as I wrote it, it just kept getting funnier. Um, the situation with the rats developed because we actually had a rat infestation in an older home that we purchased and the home was not properly sealed and we discovered to our dismay that we had rats. I mean, not just a few. No, not just a few. It, 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 it started off with my avocado on my countertop being eaten by a rat and I was, I was horrified when I discovered that this might actually be a rat in my home. And then all of a sudden we came home one evening and rats went scurrying everywhere throughout the house. They were running underneath the furniture, they were running up the ficus tree, they were leaving underneath the laundry, uh, in the laundry room. It was frightening. And I realized that I had to do something to get this problem under control and we pulled out all stops to exterminate the rats. Now that, of course, most people would think would involve a regular exterminator. In our situation, however, my husband likes to be creative and he created his own rat traps, uh, which involved some kind of a guillotine-like contraption to capture the rats in the breakfast nook of our home. And what resulted was absolute chaos, what I call the midnight rat rodeos, with dogs running into the kitchen, my little dog Gus getting his feet caught in the glue trap, slapping his feet in unison across the floor, chasing the rats, traps going off in the middle of the night, and ultimately none of it worked. We had to call the professionals. Tell me more about why you wanted to write this book. What was it about Boris? He was not your average dog. Well, first of all, he wasn't what you'd call your ordinary dog in terms of size. Boris was absolutely enormous. He was 146 pounds, he was all white, he had long flowing hair, and a nose that was about a foot long. <laughs> and he was very sensitive, wasn't he? He was. He was incredibly sensitive. He was afraid of a little tiny snail and even a spider. If there was a spider in a room, he would not come into the room. He'd see the, stu he'd see the spider on the wall, he'd stop dead in his tracks, and he'd wait for me to go and get the little spider, squish it, and flush it down the toilet. The inspiration behind this book is sort of interesting because it started really literally with a dream that you wanted to journal, and then a book grew out of that. I wanted to reflect on that dream and to share that dream. And then as that continued, I, I wanted to relive some of the wonderful experiences that, that we had together. And I recalled some of the, the fun times that we shared and the silly adventures that we shared, like when I took him to go visit with Santa Claus and he was the only dog that came up on stage to sit in Santa's sleigh. And I put reindeer ears on him, and, or antlers rather, and there was an entire church full of little children all dressed up in their holiday finest, and I come walking in with a 150-pound dog. <laughs> I was led to believe that it was a photo shoot for dogs and their people, but that wasn't the case. You have a goal for this book. I do. When I wrote the book, initially it was recapturing my memories. It was putting down onto paper my dream, our adventures together, the life that we shared together. But as time went on and as I was writing this book, I was actually laid off from my position as an art historian, as a professor of art history. And I saw many other people in the same situation as myself, losing their jobs, eventually losing their homes. And one of the consequences of that, that many people might overlook is the fact that the animals go homeless as well. And animals that had once lived in a warm home are now ending up in shelters, they're ending up on the streets. We have more of that than ever before here. Well, four million animals a year are euthanized um, in shelters that are perfectly healthy animals that could be somebody's pet. So my, my hope with this book is to raise money for animal shelters, to raise money for homeless animals and animals affected by the economic crisis. You may be an art history professor, but you've got a bug now for becoming an author. This might not be your last book. No, it might not be. <laughs> I have more plans coming up in the future. Eventually, I'd like to have my own animal sanctuary.